Hey everyone, welcome to Brain Fuel Week. I'm here with the lovely Natalie Daniels from Financial Fitness. Hey Natalie. Hi Katrina, nice to be here. Thank you so much for joining us with a, such a busy week. We have so much going on and we really appreciate your time. For those that are tuning in with us, uh, you can hover um, over the QR code at the top of the corner with your phone. Um, just open up your camera and check in with us. We also have scrolling on the bottom screen, um, the check-in link. So if you prefer to type it in, that also works. Um, but yeah, we're so excited to be here chatting with Natalie about all things financial fitness. She's going to give us some great tips for the upcoming holidays. And just as you know, it's a really difficult time um, for the last few months as we're going through this pandemic. We know finances are tight and are really important, right? Yeah, for sure. Finances are tight and they're changing. So even yeah. many people are spending in different ways, shopping online versus in stores. Emotional spending is different. It's, yes. it's, all, it's all changed so much. Absolutely. Well, let's dive right in, Natalie. And our first question for you is just tell us about your office. You are a powerhouse. <laughs> yeah. your amazing work. We were just chatting before this. For sure. So the financial fitness program is housed within DePaul Central. So physically, when we are on campus, that is in primarily in Lincoln Park in the SAC. Um, but we do have services available on both campuses when we are in person. Uh, right now, we're doing appointments and also workshops by request through Zoom and through our website. So people can request either to come talk to us or to have us set up a workshop for their student org or their small group or just a group of friends. Sometimes they all want to talk about the same thing. So we'll do a mini session for them. And you can just email us at financialfitness at depaul.edu for that. Um, so what our office does is it's, you know, financial fitness, what, what even does that mean, right? So we always think about this as kind of your personal financial health. So financial fitness is your personal financial planning service here at DePaul. Students primarily, occasionally faculty and staff as well, to really just kind of help deal with financial stress. Um, which is one of the biggest stressors nationwide. It always shows up in the top two or three kind of stress categories when people are surveyed on what's stressing them out. Um, we do that in by creating financial plans. Um, sometimes that's just listening and, and talking and maybe you don't need a full plan, but you just want to talk about what's happening with your money. Um, and then we also help students really understand different financial concepts checking accounts, savings accounts, student loans, like there's so much just to figure out um, in that day-to-day -day life. So we can help with that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and you kind of already covered this a little bit, but what are some reasons that students might seek your help? Yeah, for sure. I think the three most common topics come to, that students come in with are, and this is kind of in order, um, student loan management, that's probably number one. I'd say about 60% of our sessions have something to do with student loans. Um, but then it's really stress, um, developing spending plans, which is what I like to call a budget. It just sounds so much nicer, a plan for spending. It doesn't seem restrictive. It seems lovely. Um, and then just like understanding and building credit, I think is another big one that students would come in to seek help for. Yeah, I love that reframing, like a spending plan as opposed to budget. Like budget makes me, you know, like cringe and I'm like, oh, I can't have fun, right? <laughs> yeah, but if you're planning to spend on fun, you are fully welcome to do so, so. Yeah, absolutely. What's your number one way to like, like do this plan and plan for fun? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing we talk about, and it's it's so tied in with Vincentianism, is, is thinking about your own personal values, right? And making sure that your money is going towards things that you value and things that you believe in. Um, and, you know, it ties into so many things. So maybe you get enjoyment from volunteering and helping others, and maybe you want to make sure you have some money set aside for donations. Or maybe you get enjoyment from shopping from doing that with your friends and and make sure you're setting aside money for that and figuring out what it is that um, fits within your financial constraints right because those are different for everybody 
but also gives yourself the freedom to say, yes, I've said that I can spend $10 a week on whatever makes me happy that week. For some people, it's going out and getting a fancy coffee. I don't like coffee, so I'm never going to spend that. <laughs> but, you know, some people really do. And you often hear in the news, like, spending so much money on coffee, they should just save it. Or like, it was like avocado toast for a while. It was like, the, why are people spending so much yeah. money on this toast? And it's like, if, if that toast brings you joy, and if that coffee brings you joy, and it's not breaking your budget, that's okay. And it's, it's thinking about those priorities and making sure they're all in line. I love that. And that's such a great reminder because I think, you know, we can get in this habit where we tend to spend, 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 right? And especially if we're like online shopping more, it's much more easier to be, you know, encouraged to buy things that we don't necessarily need, right? Um, right. But there's all these like pre-Black Monday opportunities or Cyber Monday or all of these things. So I love that aligning it with your mission and your values and what you really want to be conscientiously spending your money on is so important. For sure. Because even when you go to online shop, you put the one thing you intended to buy in your cart. And then it's like, would you like these eight other things? Yes. <laughs> when you're in a store, you're like, this is my list. I can go and get this one thing. And yes, you see the other things to the side, but it's not quite the same suggestive. Yes. Absolutely. I have a personal thing where I will, if I'm shopping online, I will put it in my cart and just sit on it. Do you, do you recommend that as a good strategy or what do you say? Yeah. I've had a vegetable spiralizer in my cart for a year. Because <laughs> so, I think it's, it's, you know, it's not even that expensive, but I keep thinking I'm going to make zucchini noodles. And then I rationally like, you are not going to make the zucchini noodles, so don't buy it. And usually what I actually do, if, if something's in my cart for that long, I translate it to maybe a wish list at the end of the year and give that to people that are asking me, what do you want for the holidays? And so all these things that I thought I wanted but stayed in my cart that I didn't want to buy for myself, yeah. that's what I want for the holidays. I, I love that, Natalie. And you think about these small items because a spiralizer is a smaller item, right? Um, but those smaller items tend to, to add up just as quickly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Well, great advice. And if you like some of this advice, I would highly recommend making an appointment. <laughs> so our next question is, what's a myth that you want to bust about seeking help, particularly around finances? Sure. So I think the biggest myth that students have is they need to have a specific question when they come into our office. And maybe that's part of we ask, like, what do you want to meet about? And that's just so mm -hmm. we can gather some information and maybe ask you to bring in some pre-work. But it's perfectly fine to say, I don't know. I'm just stressed about money. Um, I just want to talk about it. And that's that's fine. So I think the biggest myth is that you need to have like an exact reason to talk to us. The reason is I have financial stress. And that's, and that's enough. Perfect. And um, are students limited based on the number of sessions or can they meet more than once? Yeah, most students come in for one, maybe two sessions. But I have some students that I meet with every month and then maybe every quarter, you know, as they get more comfortable in their financial plan. So they can come see us as much as they want. And we also do meet with alumni as well. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people are getting that first job and they're like, oh no, now I completely need to redo my, my spending plan. I don't know what, what it yeah. is, new, like grown up salary. Um, so we can help with that. As well. That's wonderful. And, you know, as we're operating remotely, um, what kind of uh, ways can students make these appointments and reach out? Yeah, so we're mostly doing Zoom appointments right on our website, just financialfitness.depaul.edu. Right in the middle, there's a button that says set up an appointment. And there's an appointment online request form right there that you can fill out. And we check those as soon as we get them. We get an email alert and then we get those set up. So usually, a student can see us within at most a week or so of sending in an appointment request. Perfect, and you have five wonderful uh, peer advisors, right? I do, so we try to have our peer advisors do a lot of the sessions, particularly, you know, they're really good with budgeting, um, spending plans, credit, those kind of things. Um, student loan repayment even. Sometimes when people get a little bit more nuanced and tricky, then I'll, I'll see them directly, but. I love to have our students able that peer to peer interaction is so good and so valuable for students. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. So our next 
question is, what is one piece of advice for students that may be newer to our DePaul community that you might give to them? Sure, and I mean, I, this this sounds like I was thinking about this earlier. It's like, this maybe is a silly thing to say <laughs> um, in this current environment, but my advice is get out there with, you know, restrictions in a sense. So I know so many of our organizations and our resources are doing amazing programming virtually right now. And it can feel overwhelming sometimes to get see all these different Zoom appointments and sessions and clubs and how do I even join these things. Um, but getting out there and connecting with other students virtually um, is probably one of the most important things I think that students can do right now to become a really integral part of this community. I agree. And I keep telling students, particularly our freshmen um, coming on board, you know, try at least one thing, right? Go to DHub and make make an agreement to do one thing, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So this next one, what is your favorite part of your job? Oh, my favorite part of my job, and I think this is probably an answer that so many DePaul staff give, is our mm -hmm. Um, I absolutely love working with them. You mentioned my team of five amazing student employees. So them, getting to know them, watching them learn, develop new skills, and then move on to these really cool careers and jobs after college is amazing. And all the students I get to meet in our financial advising appointments and workshops, they all have such different needs. Um, no financial advising appointment is the same as the one other one. So it's this constant newness and figuring out um, what our students need and, and making them seeing that kind of wave of either understanding or relief come over their faces during a session is really great. Absolutely. I think we're all, we are here for our students and we want to help. So reach out. As you know, um, Natalie said, you know, these sessions are tailored to you, right? So whatever you're yeah. in terms of financials. For sure. For sure. Yes. So as we know, it's been a really difficult couple of months, even a difficult year, very tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of things, lots of loss and trauma and just, you know, personal, local, national things going on. So self-care. Yes, <laughs> I love it. What is your favorite way to practice self-care and how are you doing? So I'm a giant media junkie. My master's degree is in media studies, so it's like TV criticism, movie criticism kind of a thing. Oh. So I am a big TV watcher and just curling up with my dog and a TV show or maybe sometimes a book. I'm a big reader too. <laughs> um, at the end of a busy day is just great. And it's it's fun to, to both turn off your mind when you watch TV, but also because of my background, I am constantly critiquing and evaluating <laughs> what I'm seeing as well. So there's like this thing about keeping your mind thinking but also relaxing at the same time I think is a yeah. big piece of self-care for me yeah so I gotta ask what's what's your favorite show movie like what are we watching oh those it's so hard <laughs> so my favorite show of all time um is probably Buffy the Vampire Slayer um and you'll see it up there at the top of like greatest shows of all time lists all over the place and there's a reason for it it is old it is a little bit dated but it is, there is a lot of female empowerment and like, it's really interesting to see. It's, you know, it's a metaphor for growing up and for like coming into yourself. So I love that. I'm actually currently rewatching it for maybe the fourth time, fifth time with one of my friends who has never seen it. And we're mostly watching it over, over Zoom right now together. <laughs> so isn't that beautiful to get to share that experience with somebody else? It is. It is. Um, so yeah, that's probably my big, my big TV show. But I go through phases. <laughs> I, I I highly recommend Buffy as well. I remember as a young child, I was watching it on my TV, and it was the one station that came in very very fuzzy. So like you know, it like jumped in and out. So I feel like I never really saw the whole, whole TV show because it's on Hulu. Always playing with the antenna. <laughs> Maybe that's a winter intercession. Right. Awesome, awesome. And and what kind of dog? I miss that. Oh, I have a, a tiny little um mutt. Um, she's like DNA says she's half Pomeranian, a quarter miniature schnauzer, and a quarter unknown. 
Adorable. Um, she's, she's about 10 pounds of yappy wonder. And I'm blessed that she is sleeping in the corner over there and that she is not interrupting our broadcast. What's, what's her name? Penguin. Penguin, oh, how cute. Yeah, it's, I, it's a pretty good name, not gonna lie. It's adorable. All right, so we're almost, almost at the end here. Uh, sure. What are some upcoming opportunities to engage with y'all? That's a great question. Um, actually, segue back to D-Hub and tomorrow, um, we have an event tomorrow uh, that you can register for on D-Hub. It's part of what we're calling the Get Savvy series. And this is actually a partnership that our financial fitness program is doing with Loyola's financial wellness program and UIC's entire, like UIC, but University of Illinois's entire college's um, financial wellness programming. So we're doing monthly workshops on a variety of topics. Those are all posted on DHUB on the financial fitness page throughout the full year. Um, tomorrow's session is called Conscious Credit. And mm -hmm. I'll be hosting that along with um, Kamaya from University of Illinois, and we're going to be talking about how the credit system works, how credit cards work, myths and facts, all kinds of great stuff that way. Um, we've also been doing a lot on our social media, primarily our Instagram lately, and even though we're financial fitness, our social media is the DePaul Central general social media. Um, and we've been putting together short videos. Our peer financial advisors have put these clips. They're calling them fast financials together. And they're three to five minute videos on different pieces of um, personal finance. And you're welcome to comment on those, a new topic that you would like seen. We had a student recently say they'd like to see some stuff about international students. And so we're going to be working on that shortly. And let us know. Let us know what you want to see. And we'll take that in consideration as we're planning our newest videos. And then of course, as always, help us sign up for an appointment and we will be happy to work with you. Oh, that all sounds wonderful. Your credit session tomorrow sounds like something we all need. <laughs> it should be good, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, so much for the work that you do and all of your peers, they are just phenomenal. So if you're interested you know, in taking charge of your financial fitness, I really strongly encourage you to go to their website listed here, email them, call them, get involved with them on social media. They've got some really great insight and tips that are gonna help you get your financial fitness in shape. So thank you so much and I hope you all have a great week. Yeah. Thanks again, Katrina. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Yeah,